Hey everybody and welcome back. This is your science video and today we are going to talk about a new subject. And the subject is properties of materials. What is the meaning of that? Let's take a look at this bottle. What can we say about the properties of this bottle? Is it hard? Is it soft? Of which material is this made? Well, lots of questions that we are going to answer at the end of the class. First, we are going to start with a video to explain you a little bit more about properties of materials. So, are you ready? Then we can start. Ah, yeah. oh, hey everybody. Hi. The world around us is made of all different types of materials. And we can describe those materials in different ways. For example, case of So how, if you see these materials, for example, can you, can you try to describe the materials? What can we say about the scissors, for example? And what can we say about these dices? Are those materials different? Yes, they are. So what can you, ex what can you, how can you describe these materials? There are different ways to do that. Let's see. These objects that we might find in the classroom. Now these objects can be arranged based by their properties. So the first property we're going to arrange them by is size. So we have several very large objects and several smaller objects. So we're going to take our large objects, like our scissors, our stapler, and our computer mouse, and we'll put them over here. Then we're going to take our smaller objects, our die, eraser, paperclip, pencil, and our half dome, and move them over here. And you can see that we can separate them based on that property. So the first property is size. You can divide them by size. There are large objects and small objects. So a scissors is bigger than a die, for example, right? So that's how you separate the materials. So one of the properties is size. We can also arrange them in different ways. Let's try arranging them by color. So we have reds. So let's put all our reds in one group. We have a red stapler, red scissors, and a red die. We have our gray mouse and our gray paper clip. We have a green die and a green eraser and a yellow pencil and a yellow dome. We can also arrange these objects based on how they feel. So we have some heart. Okay, so they did arrange them by color, right? So another property is color. You can separate the materials by color. So you can separate them by size and by color. But there are more. Let's see. Hard objects and some soft objects. So as we go through, we want to arrange them. We'll put our hard objects over here and our soft objects over here. Our computer mouse and our paper clip are both hard objects. Same with our die, both colors, our, pet, our scissors, and our stapler. Those are all hard objects. Our eraser, on the other hand, is soft. You can see that it's bendable. The half dome is also soft. Our pencil, that's going to go in our hard object. Now we have them arranged by hard and soft. So you can feel the materials and you can say if it's hard or soft. What about <laughs> your sweater? Is your sweater hard or soft? And what about this marker? Is it hard or soft? That's a different property than the sweater that I'm wearing. I wonder why different objects are made from different materials. It's done that way so that it's more convenient. For example, the floor. It's hard so that we can stand on it confidently without falling through. Our clothes, on the other hand, are soft. They're soft so that they're more comfortable for us. What if your clothes were made of a hard material? For example, I have this teaspoon here. What if my sweater was made with this material? Would that be comfortable to wear or warm or soft? This is 
pretty hard. So imagine that your clothes were made of metal. Where? Actually, that's true. Can you imagine if builders and the people who made our shirts switch those two around? What do you think? Can you answer those questions? What are the properties of a stone? Do you remember some of the properties that we discussed before? What are the properties of a stone? What do you think? Is it hard? Is it soft? Which material is it made of? and soft. Some solid stuff can be made out of it. Houses, gazebos, a park lane can be paved with it. That's right. Stone is heavy and dense, so we make strong things from it. Can you imagine what would happen if we made a boat from stone? What do you think if you make a boat with stones? What happened to the boat? It will sink very good. So is it a good idea to use stones for a boat? Mm -mm -mm. The boat would sink right away because stones are heavy. That's right. It wouldn't work very well. A rock's properties make it heavy and dense. It doesn't float very well and it doesn't make a very good boat. What we need is something with different properties. Something that's light and can float, like wood. Let's try this wooden boat. Let's put this wooden boat in the water and see what happens. That works. So they use different materials with different properties for a boat. Because we realize that you cannot use stone for a boat because the properties of a stone doesn't, doesn't match with a boat. Because a stone is too heavy, so the boat would sink. But wood, for example, has different properties. It wouldn't sink and it's lighter. So it is perfect to make a boat out of wood. So the properties of materials are very important to decide what you're going to use it for. The different properties between stone and wood is why the boat can float and the stone sunk. That's why builders have been making boats from wood for thousands of years. What about now? There's even more durable floating materials like plastics nowadays. But even today, some boats are still made from wood. The bench is made out of wood too. Yes, many different objects are made from wood. A house, a bench, or a boat could be made from it. Also a toy. Game. Now it's your turn. Take a look around school and your home and look at all the different objects. Try and organize them into groups based on their properties. You can organize them by color, size, shape. Looking at these properties will bring us one step closer to understanding the world around us. Feel free to leave comments down below and let us know what kind of objects you found around your house and the different properties that you organize them into. So that is exactly what we are going to do today. I will explain more to you in the next video. So I'll see you there.